At times, it can feel as if too many shooters have an overly serious tone about them. Sometimes it's good to play a shmup that isn't meant to be overly epic or heavy-handed. For those looking for a game that doesn't take itself too seriously, 1991's Troubleshooter for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive is a great alternative to the more serious space sagas typically seen on the platform. As it turns out, it's also a funky fresh shooter with all kinds of unique mechanics. In almost every way, Troubleshooter makes an effort to shake things up with its many unique gameplay elements. Straight off the bat, you'll notice that you control the two main protagonists, Madison and Crystal, at once. While Madison is fixed in position and constantly fires to the right, Crystal can be flipped to fire in either direction. However, only Madison's gun can be leveled up. You can increase the Troubleshooter's speed by picking up the S icon, and the F icon will increase Madison's shots. Before setting out on your mission, you'll also select your choice of a support drone, each with unique special abilities. In order to use the bomb attack that these drones grant, you'll have to wait until your charge meter fills to maximum. If your trigger finger is a little too itchy though, you'll be penalized for your overzealous button mashing by having your charged energy discharge with no effect, only to have it build up again. In addition, while you only have one life per se, you're able to increase the number of hits Madison will take. Your hitbox is only Madison, Crystal is invulnerable, so you won't be penalized for having shots and hazards collide with it. You can increase your hits by reaching an extend score or picking up hearts as you go through the six stages of this game. Don't be fooled by the semi cute up presentation though, this is a pretty challenging game, and one that requires a lot of memorization and persistence. With Madison's fixed right firing, Crystal being able to switch position for forward and rear firing, and the patience required for a successful bomb attack when needed, Troubleshooter is quite a technical game, despite only really being a point A to B story shooter. Being made by Vic Tokai, Troubleshooter is a game that has a deep anime vibe to it, even though the characters have obviously been renamed for an American release. However, it also has a very cheesy localization which, while still entertaining, adds to the campy feel to the game. And it ends up coming off pretty darn corny, with lines such as, the best man for the job is a woman, and a play on the classic Looney Tunes that's all folks closing line. Still, despite some of these localization hiccups, the story is coherent and fun to play through with story scenes between each stage. The graphics are bright, colorful, and nice to look at. Everything is well defined, though the character sprites are a bit big for this sort of title. They aren't as massive as, say, Omega-5, but you'll often find Madison colliding with all sorts of junk that you don't want to hit with a frequency that'll likely be higher than you want. The character design, however, is very solid. There are also some pretty catchy tunes, and the sound effects are fairly well produced for the most part, with the exception of some scratchy voice clips, which can more or less be excused because of the quality of the rest of this game. Admittedly, I was certain that this was going to be an awful game, especially with its Mega Man caliber box art and ultra cheesy back cover descriptors. But as it turns out, Troubleshooter is actually a pretty fun, engaging, and challenging game. So just how does Troubleshooter stack up? Let's take a look. With large sprites, fairly slippery control, and times where Madison will get caught in the environment, the control in this game suffers, but not enough to make it unplayable. Switching Crystal around is fairly sluggish too. A similar directional shift is used in Thunder Force to greater effect. Still, the game is far from unplayable, and it just takes a few minutes to get the hang of things. Most of the challenge is derived from the large sprites, but it will take a bit of time to get the hang of the controls and learn what comes next in this game. However, there are extra difficulty modes for a harder game. There are six stages to blast through, but each are fairly short. Multiple difficulties extend the play experience, but since Troubleshooter is a one-player only game, it drags down the score in terms of length. In terms of sound and visuals, there are some really catchy tunes in this game, but the VO comes off as kind of scratchy. The visuals are bright and colorful with good character and enemy design. There's also very little slowdown to speak of, making Troubleshooter a great looking game. There are a lot of unique concepts at play in Troubleshooter, with the two, and later three, characters on screen, the selectable drones and switchable firing direction. It all comes together to make a very fresh play experience. You can get a copy of Troubleshooter for anywhere from $10 to $20 at auction, 
but a careful buyer might be able to snag it for a dollar like I did. All in all, being a lighthearted, fun, and affordable shooter, Troubleshooter is a pretty good title to break up a sea of serious space battle, and despite its flaws, comes recommended.